Tom Hadfield, if you could curate your own fantasy festival lineup, who would you pick to play? Artists can be living or dead. Living what's or the, dead? What's the bill of your dream festival. Oh my God. You rock up in the truck, there's the lineup, you're like, this is going to be the best festival. Um, wow, okay, probably have to put the Beatles on. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. That's a that's a how many people how many people are in the lineup? I mean, like I mean, fifty. You want me just I mean, should we just? Uh, we could be here all day, but let's say you know, like you know, top, top three, four. Yeah, let's do. Uh, well, let's have. Uh, I think the Beatles would probably headline. Maybe the Stones. Um, Elvis, put Elvis on. That's there. a good lineup. <laughs> um, it would be something else. Maybe. Uh, Maybe ACDC, just for the just city, a little yeah. rock, yeah. just get people moving. And then you headlining above them all. And then maybe, they yeah, can all yeah play of course. I mean, of course, the I mean, <laughs> I, no, I'd be, I'd be on like a very, I'd be like in the parking lot stage <laughs> at this festival. And then maybe, uh, I don't know, like Otis Redding or something oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. That's good. Mix it up, nice, very. Okay, White Buffalo Fest, it's happening in, <laughs> in, in our minds. Yeah. It's happening just, in our minds. Schoenberg, do you enjoy traveling? We were talking earlier, you've, yeah. you've, you've kind of been to a lot of places even just recently and haven't maybe seen as much of the city as, you, as you'd like yeah sometimes you get a chance i mean do you enjoy that whole side of it i do i mean i love seeing different cultures that expand your mind and opens you up to a lot of different ways of life um but yeah being a musician you don't really get to experience all that much you know a lot of it is kind of that two and a half block radius <laughs> around the venue or around your hotel is what you see and there's not there's often not a lot of downtime to be able to go explore other mm. areas of the cities but yeah i love traveling okay uh hacken merland which i think i've got right hacken uh how's the adult language in some of your lyrics being welcomed among your more conservative fans because you know some of the songs are a bit sweary yeah i don't know it's weird like even uh some of my family i've always kind of not limited like just whatever comes out comes out and i've never thought twice about not doing it or censoring myself mm. um but yeah there was weird there was a couple there's a couple moments and i've seen it in the press every once in a while like oh it was i think i i called um i say a piece of ass you do and one of my things which i meant it very com complimentary yeah, in, in the like song. as a yeah like as a as a you know you're not just my woman you're a piece of ass yeah. the idea that uh you know you're attractive and you're in you know i want to be with you kind of idea not that you're a hooker or, or or something where some people interpret in this yeah. um, strange way. That's I've had most more backlash. But then some people love that. So they're like, oh, I like that line. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the uh, I have had some people saying, well, it's, is it necessary? Like, I feel like you're just trying to shock and which it's never really my intention mm. to shock at all. I just think it is flowing with the song or, you know, a couple of times I've had to play on the radio or something. So you have to change it. And one song, there's a song called uh, Home Is In Your Arms, where I start off saying, your love is a motherfucking revelation, is how it starts off. And then I had to change it for a radio station, and I said, your love is the mother of revelation. And I said, wow, that's, that's a better a, line. That's a good lyric. It's a considerably better line than, this, than the bad word. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, that's a shame. <laughs> you know, but I don't know. You can't go back and re-record it, but... Ryan Schaumbach, uh, he says, I've always had a deep connection between your vocals and that of Richie Havens. Was that someone you consciously tried to emulate or was that something that naturally developed or am I way off base? That's the person I think I sound most like. There you go. Is Richie Havens. Ryan, you're um, right. When people say, oh, I think you sound like Richie Havens, I'll, I'll be like, oh, thank you. Or not thank you, but or like, I kind of think I sound like Richie Havens too. Uh, I mean, people say, like, I sound, they think I sound like Johnny Cash or I sound like Eddie Vedder or... Other people, which I, I don't hear as much, but the Richie Havens call, I think I do. But I've never tried to emulate him. It's just kind of whatever this is coming out. It comes out, you know. Final question. Dave Thule. I think I've got your name right, Dave. If you could have a beer with anyone from history, who would it be and why? Oh, wow. I'd probably have to be someone who enjoyed beer, but I'm not sure. Um... I don't know, maybe somebody like Bob Dylan. Okay, why, why Bob? 
uh, just to kind of pick his brain about songwriting or life or, you know, maybe his process. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully have multiple beers with him <laughs> and then we could go a little deeper and have yeah. some laughs. But yeah, somebody like that, I think that I could uh, hopefully absorb something that, you know, could help my craft. Yeah, that could happen. That could happen. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I hear he's kind of reclusive. But I'm, a, I'm available for a beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's good to speak to you, man. Thank Pleasure you very much. Pleasure to speak much. to you. Yeah, Pleasure. thank you.